Ava. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh boy, we are still sleepy. I think. Huh? Hey, Ava. Hi. Hi. Ah, Ava's waving. Let's show Ava there. Come on, say hi. Hi, Ava. Hi. <laughs> Did you see yourself? Oh. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. It's a brand new week. And this week, we're going to be starting school in the Kleachko household. The uh, school year has begun here, and so we're getting ready for that, gearing up for another school year. Okay, and but uh, before anything else, let's uh, do the commentary for this morning. So today's Monday, August 12th, 2019. Hi, Shana. Hi. Okay, so uh, let's read part of the gospel from St. Matthew chapter 17 verses 22 to 27. So at first Jesus was talking about how the Pharisees and the scribes were planning to kill him. Okay, so he was talking to his disciples in Galilee. And then from there uh, they went to Capernaum. And then they were there in Capernaum. And they visited the temple. And the collectors of the temple tax approached Peter and said, Do not your teacher, does not, sorry, does not your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he said. When he came into the house, before he had time to speak, Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? From their subjects or from foreigners? When he said, from foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the subjects are exempt. But that we may not offend them, meaning the temple people, <laughs> uh, go to the sea, drop in a hook, and take the fish, the first fish that comes up, open its mouth, and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. Okay. So, this is perhaps uh, a story that might be a little uh, uh, tough for you to understand because... Uh, you perhaps have no concept of taxation yet or what it's all about, right? Uh, but there are different uh, underlying meanings to this particular gospel commentary today. Uh, when our Lord says, from whom does uh, 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 a government or the kings or a government take taxes from? Is it from uh, their children or uh, from foreigners? Okay? What our Lord meant here, you see, he used the term, from kings, where do the kings of the earth take their tolls from? Right. So, is it from their own children, the king, the king's own children, or from the other people? Right. Of course, uh, the kings won't tax, won't ask their own children to pay money to them, right, for governing the 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 country. So that's what our Lord meant here. Now, our Lord was saying that because, well, he is the son of the king, right? He is, well, the king. He owns, <laughs> he owns, he owns the universe. He is the creator of everything, right? And so, uh, for all intents and purposes, well, our Lord is exempt from having to uh, pay the obligation of tax, right? Especially to the temple, the temple of worship, his own house. Right? That's what he meant here. Right? But in order not to cause scandal, in order not to cause scandal, because other people will not understand that and they were not prepared to understand that yet, then our Lord does a little miracle and tells Simon, go ahead and go fish. Uh, and, you know, the first one that comes up, you find a coin in there and you pay it. Okay. Well, so let's... Um, uh, let, let's examine a little bit closer what our Lord is trying to teach us. Um, the other meaning, the other side of 
this particular gospel commentary, I mean gospel uh, for today, has to do with our Lord, although He may be exempt from this obligation, He wanted to give us a good example of how ordinary citizens like us nowadays in our day and age should participate in the governance of our own selves, of our own uh, communities, of our own country. Okay, Our Lord is teaching us a good lesson of how each and every one of us should contribute to the attainment of the common good in society. Okay? So the common good is, is a nice and important concept uh, to understand. Uh, and very briefly, what that means is common means in this case everybody's good okay what is good for everybody in the community that is what common good is all about okay as opposed to particular good the good of each one in the community okay common means there must be a kind of good where everybody can partake of and can participate in and can contribute to. That is what common good uh, means. And that has plenty of applications in, uh, in civil society. And our Lord is teaching us here, we should all participate in that. We should all be part of that. Nobody is exempt. Okay, Even the seemingly exempt and the apparently exempt people should not feel like they're entitled to some exemption but they should actually be feel to feel rather compelled to participate okay in providing for the common good in cooperating with with governments to achieve the good of everybody in the community and that and to do that to do that one of the uh, ways that, uh, that we do it nowadays, which is how they did it even way back, was to pay a little something out of our own income, to contribute a little amount, okay? which, is, which is mandated by government in, now, in the case now, a little amount towards, towards the, the upkeep, the maintenance, the furtherance of aims, Okay, and the development of a, a city, a state, and a country. In the case of America, that's what we do. Right? We pay taxes to the city, to the state, and to the federal government as a whole. And, and that is done by people who are making money. And, you know, we, we have to, uh, we have to uh, take a piece of our income every month. Okay? And we allocate that for paying taxes. Okay? And you're going to be doing that too. Once you are, uh, are capable, once you start working or once you start doing business, you're going to be doing the same thing. Because that is the way that we all participate in uh, the common good. Okay, And that is an obligation, a civil obligation, which, well, we should not uh, be cheating on we should not be uh, escaping from we should not be trying to avoid okay no matter how tough it might be but there is always uh, merit in having to participate in providing for the common good and you know where do our taxes go just to give us examples where do our taxes go here in america particularly let's give some examples um building the wall building the wall <laughs> Okay, before building the wall. Um, well, the more common things will be, you look how look at how nice our roads are, right? And, and uh, every time you would see uh, damaged uh, uh, roads, you got uh, people uh, there repairing it right away. So it goes to those kinds of services, right? You got nice paved roads. You got nice manicured uh, playgrounds for children in communities, right? You have, uh, you have, uh, uh, how's that, honey? You have 911, okay? Every time somebody needs emergency uh, response, um, there is 911. So, uh, takes care of our needs like that. Kobe, what's that? 
Oh yes, yeah, education. So schools, right? You pay taxes and the government builds schools. Public school system is, is something supported by our taxes. Okay? So things like that. There are, so, there are plenty of those kinds of things that uh, our taxes uh, support, the money that we, uh, we uh, provide for government. So this is a civic and patriotic duty okay, that every income earning uh, citizen uh, should, um, should be obliged to or is obliged to uh, contribute according to his own capability. Okay, now, how do we apply this concept also of common good and participation in our own little family? How do we do that? Huh? How, do we, how, do we, uh, how do we contribute to the furtherance of the aims of our family? How do you think can you do that? We don't, we don't charge you tax, right? <laughs> We don't charge you any tax, but how how can you as kids learn learn the responsibility of contributing to the the aims of the family? Sure. Huh? How's that, Joe? How's that? You said something. Huh? Yeah, cooperate in what way? Concretely. Huh? Huh? Why don't you speak up? I cannot hear you. Obey. Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, you can obey the rules that we have. But but how do you pay tax, so to speak? Serving. How do you? Huh? Okay, concretely by doing your chores, right? By doing your chores, by contributing by way of your actual work, right? The work that you put in to to do what? Huh? To to preserve the, the 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 resources that we already have, right? To the upkeep of the house, to keep your house clean, to keep your house in tip-top shape, to make sure that nothing is broken, and that you don't break them, <laughs> right? To make sure that you um, that everything is in good working order, right? To make sure that everything is clean, that you use up, right? To maintain order, so. Uh, what else? Um, uh, that you cooperate. You were saying cooperate with the aims and the goals that we set up uh, for ourselves in the family, right? Like last night before we we uh, went to bed, we were talking about those aims, those goals, right? That we are going to have between now and the end of the year for each one of you, from from your schooling to other other projects we have. Well, your cooperation in that. Your participation in the achievement of those goals, your contribution to making those goals happen is the way that you are participating in the achievement of the common good now, as early as now, as young as you are now. Okay? And this is your training. This is your training so that when you become part of the bigger society, Outside of the family, outside of the home, you will have it in mind to be good stewards of your own resources that you can contribute towards the fulfillment of the bigger aims of society, the bigger aims of government, the bigger aims of your community. Okay, So that starts here at home. And you families, you parents who might be listening to this broadcast this morning, that's what I would encourage you to do. Okay? Don't hesitate to give your children chores. Don't hesitate to give your children work to do at home. Okay? On a regular basis. From sweeping the floor to making their beds to dusting furniture to uh, washing dishes to watering plants. Of course, everything's automatic here. But, you know, yeah, there's still plants that they can water. <laughs> Uh, to taking care of pets, to giving them a bath, to, I don't know, <coughs> you, <coughs> there's so many, <coughs> excuse me, so many, many, many little things that your own children can do for the home in order that they become part of the whole organization that's called the family. Start from there. You know, everybody in this household, the Kleachko household, 
as soon as they are capable of holding a rag, <laughs> they start doing chores. Okay? They start doing chores. And you'll be surprised that uh, and, and pe people ask us, you know, how do you do it? Well, people, uh, I mean, my kids do their chores. And they, they do their chores and they, uh, there's a day, okay? Um, sometimes uh, there are chores that, can, that ought to be done every day, like washing dishes, sweeping floors, cleaning the dining table, um, you know, doing all sorts of things. But there are also, uh, the Saturday is when we do the bigger chores, yard work and, uh, and uh, vacuuming floors and things of the sort. That's what we do on a Saturday morning. And that's a regular thing. That, uh, that we do. So don't be afraid to make your kids do chores at home. That's one way that you're teaching them how to participate in the achievement of the common good. First, the common good of the family, and from there, the common good of society. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Hey, Ava, say hi. Hi, Ava. Hello, Ava. <laughs> okay, bye-bye for now, everybody. We will see you hopefully again tomorrow morning. Bye.